Should we make anything of this move yesterday after the move we've seen over the past six months? Does it, do we necessarily have to find fundamentals to explain it, or is just a pullback to be expected given the big moves that we've seen? I think the latter, Joe. Let's put some quick perspective. Uh, the FANG plus Microsoft is now 25% of the S&P 500. On top of that, since the pandemic, the Dow has been down, call it 6-7%. NASDAQ up about the same amount. And FANG and Microsoft up almost 20%. I think this is as simple as these have been outperforming. And as investors get a little bit skittish, I would refer to it as a finger prick yesterday. As they get skittish, I think that they just uh, naturally pull back more. I will emphasize this fault line, this fracturing of the market between the haves and the have-nots. It's been clear in that performance over the last uh, few months. But I think that that line is going to become even more clear in the in the months and years ahead. And so I do not think there's anything funneling wrong with most of these companies. I think some of them have real issues, uh, some of these bigger companies. But I think most of them uh, are still great companies to own for the long term. So Bradley, if if you if if you were a journalist and your editor told you write a reason why the tech stocks are down uh, yesterday, I mean you, we could come up with something based on what Congress is con is contemplating, sure. could we not? For sure. I mean, what you would write is Congress is summoning the CEOs, the four biggest tech companies, to explain themselves and their potentially anti-competitive behavior. Uh, Congress and the FTC both seem to aggressively support. Uh, antitrust investigations into the big companies, which could lead to them being broken up, and at the very least will lead to years of litigation. And so, you know, clearly the tech giants have managed to upset people on both sides of the aisle. Both parties are convinced that the tech companies are out to get them. And I think at least politically, they're in for a rough few years ahead. Joe, let me jump in there. I, I don't think, uh, I think that as a critical topic, ultimately around what Washington is going to do and how they're going to wave in. I think it is fundamental to a lot of these companies. I don't know if that was the catalyst yesterday, uh, just given we've known about this hearing for some time and this uh, antitrust uh, wranglings have been around for the better part of the past year. Yeah, that's, that's sort of how I led into it with you. I, I, I agree with you, but I also agree with Bradley that you could definitely write a, you know, and that's probably as good as a lot of times what you've seen written by, by people explaining things. We never really know exactly, right? And, and you could definitely write. The, the, uh, Bradley, the, the bipartisan nature of it is, dis is disturbing when you've got uh, two parties that don't agree on anything agreeing that, that maybe they don't like tech for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, for, it, it's disturbing for a few reasons. Number one, it's almost impossible to unite Washington, and yet Amazon and Google and Apple and the others have managed to do it. Um, number two, you know, kind of no matter who wins in November, each side has an incentive to really pursue this aggressively. Um, if the lead that Biden has does hold, while he may not wake up every day thinking about antitrust reform and competitive practices, uh, he needs to throw more than a few bones to the left. And I think he would have no hesitation in saying to Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and others, yeah, have at it. Go after Microsoft, go after Google, go after Amazon, knock yourselves out. And I don't really know who in Congress stands up for them. 